over covalent bonding shapes and just before I get to the actual shapes and the angles, um, in a lot of past papers they ask questions where they ask you why molecules take the shapes that they do. So if you come across a question like that, all you have to put is that all electrons repel each other but lone pairs repel the most. So the shape that the molecule takes is the one where the electron pairs are as far away from each other as possible, taking into consideration that the lone pair has more repulsion than the bonding pairs. So, like, you can just remember it, like, you know, the lone pairs are all alone because they're so repulsive, none of, none of the other electrons want to be near them, which is kind of sad. But yeah, that's your answer if they ask you why, and now we can get onto the actual shapes. So these are the different kinds of bonds you're going to see and maybe have to draw in the exam, and they just represent different directions, so the line is as if it's just flat on the screen or on the paper, and the dashed kind of thing is as if it's going back into the screen and the block shaped one is as if it's coming out towards you. So the first molecule we're going to look at is boron trifluoride which is an example of a molecule that has three bonding pairs of electrons and no lone pairs. And the shape that molecules like this form is called a trigonal planar which is kind of easy to remember because it's just, you know, tri because it has three bonding pairs and this is how you'd draw the molecule and the bonding angle is 120 degrees which again, is kind of easy to remember because it's just 360 divided by 3. Now we have methane which is an example of a molecule that has four bonding pairs and no lone pairs and the shape that these molecules take is called tetrahedral which I remembered because the shape reminded me of a Tetris piece, but then the other day I played Tetris and realised that there isn't actually a shape in Tetris that looks like that, so yeah. But anyway, this is how you draw the molecule and the angle is 109.5 degrees. Next we have an ammonia molecule which has three bonding pairs and one lone pair and the bonding shape that it makes is called pyramidal. And here's how you draw the molecule and as you can see the bonding angle is 107 degrees which I remember because like if you take the 107 and you get rid of the 0 and you make the 1 and the 7 go together they make a little pyramid together. Well I know it's actually a triangle but you know, same thing. Here we have a water molecule which has two bonding pairs and two lone pairs and molecules like this have a shape called non-linear and this is how you draw it, with the two lone pairs above the O and your two hydrogen atoms at the bottom with an angle of 104.5 degrees between them. Another type of non-linear you can get is if your central atom has two bonding pairs and one lone pair, like sulfur dioxide for example, in which case you still just call it non-linear but you have an angle of 120 degrees rather than 104.5 degrees and obviously you just draw one lone pair above your central atom rather than two. Now we have carbon dioxide and here the central atom carbon has two sets of double bonds but you still just count the double bonds as one bond so you'd say that you have two bonding pairs and no lone pairs and the shape that a molecule with two bonding pairs and no lone pairs makes is called linear and this is how you draw it really simple, just 180 degrees and then the two oxygens with a double bond to the carbon. Finally we have sulfur hexafluoride which has six bonding pairs and no lone pairs and as you can see sulfur has like 12 electrons in its outer shell rather than eight and that's called expansion of the octet and the shape that this molecule makes is octahedral, not hexadecal hedral or hexagonal or anything like that, it's octahedral, make sure you remember that. And this is how you draw it and the angle is 90 degrees. So those are all the bonding shapes you need to know and yeah it really is just one of those topics where you just need to make sure you know all the names and numbers because you can't really sit in the exam and try to work it out for yourself, you just need to know them. So. Make sure you do know them before your exam and good luck if you have your exam next week. Um, I'm sure you'll do fine. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this helped and 